Hey, it's your main man, Sabado. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about something I got a question about from one of my subscribers that I think is something on the mind of a lot of you, and it's the topic of Roth conversions. And so I'd like to answer a couple of questions, and I know there's a lot of information about this on a lot of different channels, and my goal here does, is not to come to you as a financial professional. I'd ask that you do not constitute this as advice, but I do want to walk you through a couple of uh, things that I've done in the last several weeks to help ensure that my future and the future of my family is safe. And so without further ado, uh, let's get into it. So about a week ago, I had a conversation, had a meeting uh, with my financial advisor. And one of the things my financial advisor talked about was the idea of Roth conversions and wanting to make sure that we don't get hit somewhere down the road with a tax bill that we can't handle or that that's incredibly high because we failed to plan at these points early in our retirement. And so we we did a couple of things and, and reviewed some very specific pieces of information, came up with a plan and are now executing the plan in a way that I think works for myself and my wife. Um, the first thing we did is we uh, we went through and did a, a full review of our current post-retirement tax bracket. Uh, when you when you look at taxes in retirement, uh, taxes change. Uh, and when you're looking at taxes as a whole, there's the overall tax bracket, then there's a the marginal tax rate. And so you end up with, as opposed to just that big number, you step into it. And so it, there's the marginal, there's the actual tax bracket that you're in, but you also have your effective tax rate. And your, what we found is our effective tax rate is down because our income sources have significantly changed. And so what we thought we were going to be paying in taxes, we're not actually paying in taxes. Uh, because if you look at the different amounts at different levels of income, you see that not all income is, is taxed the same. Again, I request or suggest that you speak to a tax professional about that. They're going to be able to give you the best information, but I want it. But I, I think the goal here is just to, to bring this to your attention so you know what types of questions to ask when you have those conversations. Then we also did a review of our our. Uh, current um, taxable income and ta or, I'm sorry, taxable accounts. Um, we have 401ks, 403bs, 457s, and, and so on, and did a, did a few, full review. Our non-taxable accounts, we're not quite, or, I'm sorry, our taxable accounts uh, mean that that's money that we contributed on a post-tax basis. So we're not as worried about those, but it's those pre-tax accounts like the 401ks and the 403bs that we found created the biggest risk for us. Um, he reiterated to us that low, earlier in retirement, we have lower tax rates. So if we're going to start to do it, now's a good time to start because we'll pay the lowest taxes now than we'll probably pay at any point in the down the road in our retirement. Um, so to, to get on top of that. Um, and there's certain key points that he pointed out that have a material impact potentially on your taxes. So for example, in your 60s, your income will increase because your non-taxable accounts become available to you. So at 59 and a half, you're now eligible to withdraw from your 401ks and those and IRAs and, and those non-taxable accounts. Um, Social Security starts to get introduced. And there's a whole method that people can use to determine when they're going to take their Social Security. But when you get in your 60s, you're able to start taking your Social Security. That increases your income. Therefore, it increases your taxes. Then when you get into your 70s, and, and one of the big things that I think is the is the impetus for this conversation are the required minimum distributions that you're required to take at 70s from your 401k types of accounts. Um, and those have a, they tend to push people into a higher tax bracket because at this point, you're unable to control how much you're being required to take from those accounts. And so if you're required to take a significant amount out, that could push you into a higher tax bracket. And so you could find yourself in your later years when you're starting to wind down a little bit, having to pay a lot more in taxes and creating a bunch of stress. And so that's what we're trying to, to guard against. And the other thing he reminded us is how taxes just historically have increased over time. The tax brackets continue to get bigger uh, as administrations change. Different administrations have different views on how people should be taxed. And so at different points in time, um, taxes tend to tend to go up. And so right now, 
we're probably paying the lowest taxes that we would be paying through the course of our retirement. Um, and then there were some, some questions that we answered. We answered our current tax bracket, understanding what our current tax situation is. Um, you know, you ha in order to get to a place, you have to start from somewhere and you have to know where it is that you're starting from. Um, we started to review how much we can convert and stay in the same tax bracket. You don't want to jump into the next tax bracket doing Roth conversions because that defeats the purpose. And so we determine how much can we convert now and continue to stay in the same tax bracket. Um, and we also, it's as, as technical as all of this sounds, there's still a layer of comfort. Sometimes it's important to not overlook the importance of how much you're comfortable with. Because again, in retirement, it's a time that you're supposed to be uh, stress-free, you're living your best life, you're doing things that you that you want to do, and if you don't have comfort with amounts that are being withdrawn or that you're paying taxes on, then that adds the stress, and, and none of us retired to feel any type of stress. Um, and so then we started taking a look at our own strategy, and I'll share with you some tidbits from our own strategy. And like most things in our life, we start small. Whenever we're going through a big change, we start small uh, so we can get a feel for uh, what it's like, number one, what it's like to pay taxes in retirement. Number two, what it's like to have your money move from one account to another and, and maybe be subject to different types of risks and so on. Um, and having to pay, having to pay down or, or withdraw from your retirement funds in order to cover the cost of those taxes. It doesn't seem like much. It seems common sense, but we wanted to just make sure we were comfortable with that and really spent a lot of time reevaluating our pain points um, to determine not just what the pain points were in that first year, but what do we anticipate those pain points are in subsequent years. So if we know that um, there's concerns about how we're withdrawing funds to pay our taxes in subsequent years, what can we do now or what... Uh, interventions can we have now to help us get past some of those fears or some of those pain points so in future years we don't find ourselves under an inordinate amount of stress trying to pay those uh, taxes for our minimum distributions and so you know what I would what I would suggest is is for you uh, my to do's would be um, speak to your financial advisor and or, or review your software. I know there's a lot of you out there that use different softwares to manage your retirement. You don't want to pay a financial advisor, which is 100% fine. But whatever it is that you're using to calculate your finances through the course of your retirement, make sure you go back and you review those. Take a look at what the implement, implications are of going through the process of Roth conversions. Um, I would imagine that most softwares would have it. We don't use the software, we use our financial advisor, but model that out so at least you know what it is that you're working with so you can make an informed decision. Then once you determine that, document your plan and, and, and your method to track your plan. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've created a plan, I was gung-ho with the plan, I wanted to move forward with that plan, and then I got nervous at the last minute, revised the plan, and then just to find that the original plan worked fine. And then I was frustrated because I changed the plan. But if I document a plan, then I tend to hold myself accountable to that plan, just like we do with everything else. And so, and, and to make sure we track that plan so we could look at year one, this is what we did. This was our plan. This is how it worked out. Year two, this is what we did. This was our plan. This is how it worked out. And just make sure you have that method ahead of time so you don't find yourself scrambling to try to figure out a plan down the road. And then the last one, like everything else, just get after it. Um, again, if you start slow, the pain won't be too difficult when you start to get into it. And so if you need to change course, change course. Sometimes we need to change course. But it, none of this makes any difference if we don't take the steps to go ahead and, and get after it. So... Again, I just wanted to give you a quick one. I know there were some questions about it. Um, I wanted to make sure that I could do what I can to at least help kickstart some of the thought process around how to, to deal with Roth conversions because I know if you're anything like me, there's so much information out there. It just tends to get overwhelming. And if I get overwhelmed, then I start to analyze too much. 
And then if I start to analyze too much, then sometimes I just say, I just throw my hands in the air and say, I'm not going to do it. I'd hate to have you do that. Then in your 70s, have a huge tax bill and have a problem that you could have fixed earlier down the road. So uh, on that note, I'll let you go. But I do ask that if you found this information helpful in any way, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, if you'd like to have more direct one-to-one -one conversations, you can also send a, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, become part of my Facebook community um, on Ask Sabado. Um, I have a, a Facebook community that I just started, as well as uh, you could capture me on uh, Instagram. And on either of those, you could send me messages and I respond to messages or leave a message in the comments because I try to get back the comments within 24 hours and, and help answer some questions. And I think those comments really give us some good, useful uh, uh, data for these, for these conversations that we're having here. So on that note, have a good rest of your day and we will talk soon.